Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Kim and today I'm going to take you through a bit of a journey. So I'm going to take you through the journey that my fabric takes from the time that I order my fabric online to when it ends up in my fabric stash. So to start with, I'll go online and start looking for fabric. So you know that I have been thinking about making a orange sweatshirt. So I have been onto the site and I have found the sweatshirt fabric that I want and I have ordered it. And they have very kindly sent me a order confirmation email through. And some of the order confirmation emails we receive have these lovely images on, which is which is great. And what I do is once I get this get this through, I will print it off and I will look at the information and I will just go and add more information to it because this information is quite important to me going forward and I'll cross that a little bit further on in the video. So once I've got my email confirmation, what I do like to do is I need to find out additional information like the width of the fabric, the weight of the fabric, the composition of it and whether it is directional or not. So generally we get basic information in our confirmation emails and I just go straight onto the website after I've ordered just to pull that additional information off and the reason why I do it straight after ordering my fabric is because if that fabric then goes out of stock it comes off the site and you've lost that information. So here you can see I have gone on to the site and found um, the additional information that I want. So once I've done that, I can then file this away into my folder. So I have this, this folder, which I keep all of my orders in. So basically everything I purchase, I will always print off the confirmation email and I will put it in here. And it's a great reference for me to know when I've ordered something. And if I ever need to go back um, to order something in the future, I can refer to this and I generally get a good idea of whether uh, you know the company is a great supplier. Um, so I have got my order made and I will put it in there and then basically I can forget about it. Now that sweatshirt fabric that I have ordered takes 14 days to arrive which is for me quite a long delivery period and my memory is atrocious so in a week's time I will probably forget how much I've ordered so it's good for me to have that as a reference and I know that it is there and if I need to refer back to it I have all the information I need so that is how I order and that's my order confirmation email and then I move on to the next stage so the next stage is um, Whilst I'm waiting for my fabric to arrive, I will generally write out a index card. So you have seen my fabric index card before. So I've mentioned this a few times. So this is my, my fabric index card. So this is basically my stash in a box. So every piece of fabric I own is a little snippet of it in this box so um, it's great for me when I'm trying to find a fabric for a pattern because I don't have to go through my stash I can generally just go through this but I'll cover a bit more of that later so this is my fabric index box and what I need to do is I need to make up a card for my fabric and generally when I make up the card for my fabric, I will either do it straight away or I will wait for my fabric to arrive. So some of my fabric has already come and um, we're, I'm going to open that with you. So I'm quite excited. Here it is. 
and um, I have actually had this for a few days and I've been itching to open it but I thought I would wait uh, and show you my process so here I go let's open so Lovely pink tissue, how lovely, and a nice little sticker from Beyond the Pink Door, really nice. So I'm just going to rip all the tissue off. Oh my god, it's lovely! Right, so the tissue's off, got a nice little thank you card. Thank you, thank you for, for your order. We pre appreciate your support, Andrea. Oh, lovely, lovely, really nice. Right, and here is my fabric. So there's one piece, and that's the second piece. God, it is it is absolutely beautiful. It feels gorgeous. Now, yes, it feels lovely. Oh, yeah. Right, I better move on before I wet myself. So. <laughs> God, that's so nice. So, yes, yeah, so I've ordered two and a half metres of both of these fabrics. Now, the, this fabric is from a fabric designer called Nerida Hansen. Nerida Hansen, and I haven't heard of her before, but I have started seeing some of her fabrics pop up all over the place, and they're absolutely beautiful. So, once I've got my fabric, I will take a little swatch of it from the corner so I take a tiny little square from the corner and once I have that I can then send my fabric off to be washed yeah I wash it I don't send it off to be washed by anybody else I will I will take this downstairs and I will wash it and it will go through the washing process so that will be on its way in a moment so once I have my square piece of fabric I then start writing out my index card so this is the start of my index card so as you can see there's, there's quite a bit of information on there so what I do is I will make um, a list of everything I want to know about this fabric so that once it's in my stash if I come to it, even if I come to it a year down the line I have all the information um, to make a better choice of fabric for the garment that I'm making. Um, so I will put the details of what this card information holds in the description below, but basically it is fabric name, price per meter, length and width, weight, composition, directional, cotton co, supplier, date, and also whether it's been pre-washed. So, that will get written out and then once I have my little square of fabric I will then stick it with a bit of um, Pritt stick to the corner of my card so that's my little sample there and then I will fill and um, fill out all the information so here you can see I filled out all the information well most of it so I'm going to cover a little bit about the cotton code in a moment so once that's filled out um, this this is quite a comprehensive list for me and it works for me and obviously if you decide to do this you just need to put on your card what works for you um, the reason why I like to put the the weight of fabric because especially if you're learning about fabric it's good to know about um, the weight of fabric because most of us buy fabric online and we don't really have a clue of how it will actually feel once we get it back into our sewing areas um, so it's quite good to know the weight of it um, because it will generally give you an idea of how it will flow and how it will drape and I once I have um, use these cards I also find them quite a good reference 
in the future to look at uh, the composition of a fabric and the weight of a fabric and I know that if I order a similar fabric I'm going to basically get the very similar look and feel of that fabric so I do find this quite um, a good learning tool especially when you're learning about fabric it, it'll be quite good for you to to have this sort of um, swatch so you can feel it you can see how it drapes you can have a look at the back of it um, and it's quite useful so I've got my fabric swatch and my card near completed so the next thing I need to do is I need to find out the cotton code the reason why I like to get the cotton in in a in advance is because if I decided that I wanted to make this up straight away I have the cotton to get going I don't have to wait for it and I am the most impatient person so I like to be able to get it in advance and to do that I have this Gutterman booklet of threads so when I use this booklet, um, it's got all the lovely threads and you can, you know, you can always find something that will match your fabric. And at the top you have numbers one through to 16. So they're the strips. And what I do is I have bags numbered one to 16. So when I look for my fabric, sorry, when I look for my cotton, I will go and locate it and then I will look at the strip number and then once I have the strip number that tells me what bag I need to look in to see whether I have some of this cotton already in my stash and if I haven't then I will need to put it on my shopping list. So the process starts so I've got my swatch and um, I think it will probably suit a cotton in this area here so yeah. so I think it suits this this number here uh, this um, cotton color here and I just flip up the strip and it will give me the cotton code number. So the cotton code number for this is 694. So I've got my cotton code. So once I've got my cotton code, I know that it is then in strip three. So in strip three, I know I have to look for cotton 693. So I'm gonna make a note first of all On my card so there it is so strip three so I go and look for my bags through my cotton bags and I look for bag number three that's bag number three okay so I've only got half a dozen cottons from that strip so let's see whether I actually have that cotton already in my stash so here we go Oh, six, oh, it's 694, sorry, 694. So I do, I have that cotton already in my stash and it's a nice big reel. So I know I've got that, which is great. If I didn't have it, I would then put it on my shopping list. Sometimes if I have um, a, a smaller reel, these 100 metre reels, then I would generally order a second one because um, I don't know why, but sometimes when you're making garments now, you can never get a garment out of one reel. So I will put on my shop, shopping list to buy another 100, 100 metre sprawl. So um, once I start, I know I have all the cotton that I need to make um, a garment with that fabric. So that's my, my cotton. Um, and just to quickly show you, when, 
all my bags are like this I have a drawer where I have all my cotton bags I have bag one bag two bag three right up to bag 16 and each of those bags relate to one of these these strip numbers so it just means that when I'm looking for a cotton I'm not rummaging around in a box full of cottons that are all tangled up and all over the place and it just makes it a lot easier to find your cotton um, when you're ready to start working on your project. So that's my cotton found so I've done that. Um, also it's quite important I think um, when I have my little swatches I just point this out because some fabric is directional and I have put a little note on there whether it's directional or not and the reason for this is because you can't see it in the swatch and obviously when you start using your um, fabric index box you need to know whether it's directional because once you look at the pattern you just need to look at the pattern to see how the um, pattern pieces are, are laid out and whether if it is directional you need to move them around and in effect have enough fabric to make up that garment so that is quite important so that is my um, index card done and then what I do is I then send, send I then go downstairs and I will wash my fabric and then once it comes back this is the, the end of the process. So whilst um, I'm waiting for that to, to happen, I will, I will come back shortly. So in the meantime, this card just goes into the two and a half meter section. And I usually leave it like that until that washed fabric comes back and then it can then tick that box, you know, has it been pre-washed? Yes, okay. So, see you in a minute. Right, so I have washed my fabric. Now, on the washing instructions on the site, it said to wash it at 30 degrees and not to tumble dry it. Now, I have washed it at 30 degrees, but I have tumble dried it. I always tumble dry. Um, my fabrics because if my husband washes anything he tumble dries everything to death so I have tumble dried it because if it does shrink I want it to shrink at this stage rather than later on down the line so it has been washed at 30 and tumble dried and it survived thank god so once it's um, laundered the next process is for me to then store it onto a board so I bought I bought a hundred of these boards probably oh, about two three years ago during the pandemic that's when I started to go through this process of um, organizing my fabric stash so I bought some boards and what I did is I numbered them from one to a hundred and when a board becomes free I then put any new fabric that comes in onto that board and the reason why I do that is because I'm trying to keep my fabric stash to a hundred which is quite a lot but it also um, means I can try and keep it under control and I'm trying not to go over a hundred though I am at about 112 at the moment so next year will be um, I will have a goal of trying to get that back to a hundred and then start bringing my stash down but board number eight is now free so I'm going to put that my fabric now on the board so fabric on board so it's all been pressed and I just literally roll it on Right, so here it is on its board. So it's nice and compact and it's easy to store. So it doesn't finish there because what I do is I get my, my card back out. I just tick where it says it has been pre-washed. So I can tick it's been pre-washed. 
and I also put the number of the board on the corner. As well as a number of the board, I will put another number because my storage area is divided up into eight um, boxes in effect. So I hold all of my cotton fabrics in box areas one and two. So I'm going to put this in box area one. So there you can see I have put one stroke eight. So the reason for that is when I start to look at my fabrics and I think, oh, I like that fabric, I don't have to go rummaging through all of my unit to find it. I know that it is going to be in the first box at the top of my unit and it is fabric number eight. So now that has been completely finished and that can definitely then be filed away in my fabric index box. So once um, this fabric is wrapped around its board, I make up a, a little tag for it. So um, you might think this is a little bit overkill, but I'm just anal about all of this stuff. Um, and I just feel it's just the last stage. And it just makes it easier for me to locate fabric um, later on when I, I'm, I'm looking. So I have my little tag. So my tag looks like that. And if you're interested, I will add them as a downloadable um, PDF so you can print them off. I just print these off on thin card. So once I've got my tag, I then basically, using the information that I originally put onto my fabric index card, I just repeat that information on here. So once it's on here, on the back, I can also put the number where it is held in my storage unit. So it's one, unit one, fabric piece, number eight. Okay. So the last bit is to actually attach it onto my fabric. So I've got my tag, got my fabric, I've got my little tag gun, which I got off of Amazon. And I, first of all, put a little hole in the top, put my gun in, very sharp, and then pierce it through the very end of my fabric. And then it has being tagged. So what will happen is now this will go into my fabric stash along with all of my other fabrics that have been tagged and I will put up a, an image of my um, storage unit so you can see how it's been um, stored along with the rest of my fabric. So that is basically the journey that my fabric makes from the time that it's ordered to when it reaches my fabric stash. So and the reason why I do all of this is because when I decide that I want to make something, I want to be able to um, look at my patterns. Now I do keep my patterns um, in numerical order up here and I will, I will do a video in the future about how I organise my patterns as well. But most of my patterns I keep on my mobile, I use an app called Trello and it works really well for me. Um, so once I've decided I want to make something, I will then go and pull out the pattern from my boxes up here. So I'm going to use this, this pattern here as an example. So I have my pattern, I decide that I want to make this blouse. So this blouse is actually the one that I've got on here. Um, you can see it. So it's, you've seen this one before. I made it in the silk the other week and it's got the little the frills on the front and the back. Um, it's a really, really nice blouse and I have been thinking about making um, another one of these. But once I have my pattern, 
generally what I will do is I will take my pattern along with my fabric box and I'll take it downstairs and then I will start looking for what I need. So if I decide to make, uh, let's see, I wanted to make version B of this. So if I go and have a look at version B, um, I need 2.4 metres. Okay. So I know if I need 2.4 metres, just make sure. Right, okay. It's not directional, so I need 2.4 metres. So I know that I need to go and look for fabric that effectively starts in my fabric box from 2.5 metres. So anything before this is no good for this pattern. So obviously anything after this is. So I will generally pull out um, the fabrics that I have um, to make up a blouse, uh, to make up that blouse. And, um, and obviously if there's nothing that takes my fancy in the 2.5 metre section, then I just move along to the three metre section until I find something that I want. Um, and my fabric box, I've been using a fabric box really, yeah, a, ve well, a very long time. I've always had a fabric box as far, well, as far as I can remember actually, and it works really well for me. And I did think this year that I might move all of my fabrics onto a, a sort of fabric app. And I saw the other day there was a fabric app called Stash Hub and where you take a photo of your fabric and and you put all your relevant information but I thought the only the only issue that I would have with that is I can't fill my fabric I need to fill fill the fabric so I need to be able to look at it feel it I need to see what it looks like underneath. I need to really understand whether it would drape and whether it would be suitable for the pattern that I am trying to find a fabric for. So I will continue with my um, fabric index box. Um, and, the, and the nice thing also is once you have finished working on something and that fabric has then be, been used, I then will move that card out and I will put it into another box and the other box, um, I will generally keep all of my used fabric because it's great reference also when you're learning about fabrics, like I said before, the weight of fabrics, the composition of fabrics. Um, so for me, just to have two boxes of my fabrics and effectively this is my fabric stash in a box and it is just so easy to work with so hopefully you have found um, this informative the process might seem laborious and quite long-winded but to be honest with you once you once you start it is a very quick process. It only probably takes me three or four minutes to um, to do it all. So, I mean, what's three or four minutes and getting yourself organised? And it limits the frustration when you're trying to find fabric and also limit the frustration of trying to find cotton. So it works. So if you have want to have a go, you definitely consider doing it. It is it's great and it works. OK. So if you have enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up and to my all my lovely subscribers, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.